In late 2020, Blackside Studios launched Don't Look Back, a co-op horror game that was the springboard for all their future publishing titles. Close. Oh, gosh. Handy rolled a three. Inspired by 80s and 90s slasher movies, Don't Look Back is designed as a narrative horror game in which players control a group of heroes and try to make it out alive against an AI-controlled killer. So I'm sure at this point in the episode or series, um, someone has mentioned what I said when we first launched the game, which was it would be great if we sold 30 copies. Um, that is a much uh, <laughs> used line by us. And we kind of say it as a joke at this point, but when I said it at the time, I was actually being dead serious. Now, in its third year, Don't Look Back will be getting a much needed update with a new hardback book, all new core hero miniatures, and new MDF kits. I'm Matt Burns, and I'm the writer of Don't Look Back. How did you get started in tabletop, like miniatures gaming specifically? So I saw a white dwarf in a gaming store so i played um like magic the gathering and the old star wars collectible card game and my dad and i were in a local game store and there was a white dwarf and i don't know why i was looking through it and it was like that sort of caught my eye like oh man like this is really neat what is this and the guy behind the counter was sort of talking about how it's modeling, but it's a game. And I actually already was painting like 135th scale, like historical stuff just for fun, like not painting it in any sort of actual way you should be. But it was like cool to glue the World War II guys together and paint them. Mm -hmm. And then my dad, like we were talking about it, they had uh, this old metal um, Space Marine tactical squad from, I think it was third edition. And it was there and my dad was like, well, do you want to try this? And I was like, yeah. So we took it home and like, he helped me glue them together. And then I didn't even prime them and put paint on them. And that, that was really like, that was the start of miniature, miniature gaming. So this goes back to just me as a customer, really buying terrain from you guys. And then we sort of started talking about gaming, I think in general. And then COVID hit and I wrote, was writing a game and I think I had messaged you and Connor randomly and was like, Hey, I'm thinking about creating a game. Do you guys know anything about how that process works? And you guys were like, well, actually that's something we're thinking about doing. So let's have a talk. So we chatted a bit and then you had asked, can we write a horror game? So I wrote that. And then uh, we started playtesting it and everything sort of started from there. We were just a terrain company, right? People had no reason to think that we would be able to produce a game. And uh, credit to our customers who kind of like trusted us and backed that we were gonna try and make something fun. Um, we kind of pulled it off, but there was a point I think when we were gearing up for launch that we dropped a kind of just like a preview video um, that had some like images of the, the miniatures and stuff and um, kind of just sort of explained the theme around the game. And it started getting a lot of traction online on like Facebook and Instagram and stuff and people were kind of sharing it. And I think a lot of those people were horror fans and they were kind of like, oh, check out this game that kind of taps into some of my interests um and i think at that point i was like okay maybe we'll sell more than 30. um and i was kind of quietly hopeful um that we may you know sell 
a little bit more and this might actually be kind of a viable product. What do you, what do you like about that? Like what's fun about that or that to you as someone who's played a few games at this point? Don't Look Back to me was one of the first games that I had played that the game came second. When you play a game of Don't Look Back, you're not like trying to win. You're not necessarily trying to beat the killer, right? Because it's about the story that gets told during that game. And let's be honest, most most horror movie films, not everybody makes it out anyway. It's not a very good horror movie if everyone does. Um, and that was really unique to me. Up until I played Don't Look Back, I never played anything like that. That most of the time, if you think about a game, the goal is to win, right? This one, it's not. And it's so refreshing and so uh, like interesting. This is Blackside's first time launching a new edition of an existing game. And with that comes multiple new challenges, as well as navigating the nuances of selling existing players on a new book. This is the first time that we've done a, a new edition of a game that we've published. We're steaming into uncharted territory and it's different from any other game release because we have existing customers out there. So we have to be really respectful of people that have invested money in the game and also people that might be getting into the game for the first time or people that might be coming back to the game too. There's some people who've bought it, they've maybe set it aside, they liked it, but maybe they were just like, eh, you know, I'll play that another time. And then you kind of recapturing their imagination. Uh, it's time to kind of give it like a fresh coat of paint and kind of give it a bit more longevity, longevity, I think. Um, and polish. I mean, just like we were talking about, it's been three years of experience and writing and publishing and creating and and working as a team with you guys i mean it's all there's been so much that's been learned that now it's it's fun to go back and kind of reapply it to don't look back what are some of your goals with this new edition if you can achieve one thing with this new edition what what would it be uh just to make sure that it's the best player experience that it can be, you know, through polishing rules and revisiting things and adding, you know, like the, the, exp like the lore aspect that it didn't really get to do in the first one. And just making sure that it's like the, the full, the full experience and, and the most polished experience that it can be the people, new people and the people who have been supporting it since day one. So working on a new hardback book, um, has been something that Matt and I have been working on kind of behind the scenes for the, honestly, the last couple of years now. Um, the game was released, it had some success, and we really knew like that we needed to get something a little bit more substantial out. So this has been actually worked on for a while. Matt has been working on the rules. I've been developing a lot of the visuals. Um, obviously not full time. This has kind of been just like, you know, it's, uh, it's been a marathon, not a sprint for us, I think. Starting to work on a lot more art recently, and it, the project's kind of gotten to the point where I felt pretty comfortable with the creative direction that I've sort of landed on, and I'm sort of at that stage where uh, I can start to take like big kind of cuts out of um, a lot of the assets for the book book is going to be probably fairly substantial. We're talking like between 170 to 200 pages, I would imagine. Um, you never really know like the final page count until you sort of done with the layout. So it may end up being more, it may end up being a little bit less, but. So uh, we've gone through and just done like a lot of language consistency. Um, sometimes some, some of the, the same rule could be phrased or worded differently. Um, so we've gone back to make things more concise, making sure that how the killer functions in the game is clearer, um, easier to follow. Um, and again, that the, the rules that surround that are just better equipped with examples and better detailed um, and more consistent across like the different the different phases. I think those are like the big ones. 
Um, but I think what I've also come to enjoy more than I thought that I would is the like the interaction with the community and players. And I I'm kind of finding that I enjoy spending more time with the things that I've already created instead of like, let's move on to something else, gonna make things for that and make things for these other ones. It's it's become more enjoyable to kind of invest in the things that I've already created. Um and just interact with the communities there has been a lot of fun. We are launching the new version of Don't Look Back on March 21st. It's actually the day that we fly out to Adepticon. <laughs> so um, we're launching a big pre-order and then Connor and I are driving to the airport and probably getting on a plane, I would think. And the reason why we chose March is um, we want to have it done and in people's hands by Halloween. The engagement with Don't Look Back in the lead up to Halloween kind of just grows and it grows and grows. I want to make sure that this year they have the new hardback book. I'm, I'm just like super excited about that, honestly. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be Halloween 2023 for Don't Look Back is going to be like insanely cool. Mm -hmm.